podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Pick just about any spot on the North Carolina coast and you can bet you'll find that crabs have set up housekeeping. Their disposition may be downright crabby, but underneath that hard shell, they sure taste sweet. That's why blue crabs are what's cooking next in Flavor NC. Flavor NC was made possible by Got to be NC Agriculture the official state identity program for products grown and processed by farmers and value-added food companies in North Carolina. When you want the best, it's got to be NC. The Currituck County Department of Travel and Tourism. The Currituck County Outer Banks. More value, more excitement, more than you imagined. Additional support was provided by the following. There's no Main Street, no zip code, and you won't find it on a map. But our place is just as real as every mouth-watering morsel grown, raised, or harvested in North Carolina. Welcome to Flavor and Sea, the heart and soul of local food. Their scientific name may mean savory, beautiful swimmer, but we know them as blue crabs. And more of them are harvested in North Carolina's coastal waters than anywhere else in the United States. Blue crabs are found all along the North Carolina coast, including the creeks and sounds around Wilmington in New Hanover County. It's only fitting that New Hanover County is shaped like a conch shell, since in many ways it's defined by its coastal location. Sandwiched between the Cape Fear River and the Atlantic Ocean, water is at the heart of life, whether at work or play. Historic Wilmington, founded in 1739, rests along the banks of the Cape Fear, while Wrightsville Beach, Carolina Beach, and Curie Beach sit at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. In between lie the inland coastal creeks, streams, and sounds blue crabs love to call home. Now it's pretty easy to catch your own crab. All you need is a piece of string, some bait, and a little patience. But if you're not at the coast or you need more than one or two crabs, you're gonna wanna do what I've done. Make friends with a commercial crabber. Joe Romano, his brother Sam, and their friend Nathan King shelved their college degrees and started crabbing commercially in 2004. They set up Sea View Crab Company, bought a commercial license, invested in a boat and 50 crab pots, and took to the water. They now manage more than 100 crab pots, own a thriving seafood market where they sell to the public, operate a roadside stand in Fayetteville, and run a mail order business shipping crabs all over North Carolina and the U.S. Being a crabber cannot be the easiest profession to choose. What on earth possessed you and your brother to choose that as a job? Uh, you know, I think it started out just as a part-time thing. We were working, working for ourselves, working on the water, and each we hit a set of challenges, and we said, well, we need to get a few more crab pots, or we need to, they would think about selling these retails ourselves, and each step of the way, next thing you know, we're a little bit more full-time, full-time, and next thing you know, it's, so I, in terms of a choice, I think it was just the set of challenges kind of drove us into that path. I got so, you. You wanted mm -hmm. to accomplish a goal and be yep. a crabber. Yep. Now, is it in your blood? Is it family business? No, my, 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 my dad used to crab with one of his friends in the summers. He was a school teacher and he helped him out. And I, when I was a little kid, I went out there with him. So maybe that's, we always kind of knew a little bit. Right. Not really how to you know, do it as an occupation, but we'd done it before with another commercial guy. So that got us into it, I think. A little bit. But it's been a while. I mean, that was when I was five, you know, yeah, five years old. So. All right. I know it's you and your brother, mm -hmm. Sam, and then also Nathan. Yep. What do each of you do for the business? Well, right now, I, I pretty much handle the crabbing. Sometimes my brother and I switch off, but he's mostly now works on the supply chain, other getting other 
fish shrimp from other North Carolina fisher, fishermen. He drives and stays in contact with everybody. And then Nathan kind of heads up our roadside retail stand. And then we all three share responsibilities in the store in terms of, you know, making sure everything's running smooth okay. in there. I would love to go out and you show me what you do and let's go get some crabs. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Joe and I climbed in the boat and headed out on Masonboro Sound to empty the crab pots. I've done my share of crabbing off a dock over the years. It's a whole different ball game when you crab for a living. All right, Joe, explain to me what we're doing. All right, so we grab the buoy, turn on the puller, the, the rope gets uh, caught onto the winch, okay. turn the puller off, put the crab pot onto the washboard. Well, that's a lot of crab. Yeah. Is that normal as far as how many crabs you're getting right now? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, we get a, uh, depends on the type of where it is, where it's located, but uh, right there is a pretty slack pot, but you know, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, it's, it's crabbing. So are you pulling all the crab pots in or do you put it back out? I put it right back out. Well, it, it depends on what, you know, right right now, I'm just putting this pot back in the same spot, but if it starts to get slack in a certain area, then we might move, you know, move you pots move around. around yeah, or whatever. depending and on what's going on. What are you baiting it with? Uh, Minhaden. Minhaden is a real oily fish that uh, attracts the crabs and uh, works real well. Do you always bait it with the same thing? Sometimes a year, you know, we'll use a mixed bait. Those, you know, croakers are smaller fish that hold up a little bit better when it's there's a lot of bait fish going around. But this time of year, so far, menhaden's are working really well. It's better okay. scent for the crabs. Right. Mm -hmm. I noticed we're kind of back in the marsh, so to speak. Is there a reason why you do your crab pots back here? This time of year, all the most of the crabs will run, go as far as they can into shallow, shallow or holes in, in the back, or away from deep water, okay. lower salinity waters, and so that's why we're back here during the summertime. It's like that. And then in the wintertime, you can put them. Wintertime, them. yeah, the crabs migrate out to deeper water. Yep. All right, well, yeah. let's throw that sucker back in and all go right. find some more crabs. Sounds good. Once on board, Joe grades the crabs by size, sorting them into various bins, tossing back those that are too small. Okay, Joe, so you're grading the crab, yep. and how do you know which box to put these crabs in? Well, I've got my threes, my twos, and my ones, and the threes are, are female crabs, mature females, and it's going to have that bottom here, just like this. Where it's gray. Yeah, what, no, see that, that, that marking right yes. here? This, Show me the that's, difference. That's a male, oh, okay. that's a female. All right. And uh, there, I don't think there's any immature females this time of year, so I can't show you that. But so the threes are going to go there, and then number twos are going to be a five inch to a five and a half inch crab. And this is my five inch to make sure it's a legal crab. That's a legal crab, okay. but it's not a number one, so it's going to so go into the twos. Yep. Okay, so what does the number one look like? Okay, so this is a number one. He's got a real rusty jimmy. He's nice and full of meat, and you know he's got a good hard shell on the bottom. You see the brown color. That's a good meaty crab, and it is the size of it. It's over to five. And that's probably about a you know six inch crab. Okay. You said a rusty Jimmy. What's a Jimmy? Uh, that's, oh, I'm sorry. That's a male <laughs> crab. That's a male okay. crab. Big like number one Jimmy's is like it's a number one what male. What you call a female? Like a Jamie? You call it a, a sook or a Sally. Everyone's got a, a different. Sally. Okay. Yeah, sook. I usually call them sook. Jimmy and a Sally. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, so number one is number two is number three is more of a, I guess, an industry grade. That's a, you okay. Know. So you're out here all day and mm -hmm. you're, you're filling your in your crab pots. Yep. So how often do you grade them? Every two or three pots? Yeah, or at the end of the day? it depends. Usually, you know, I, at least every, usually every pot, every two or three pots. If I don't catch a lot of crabs in the pot, you know, if it's a, if I shake it out and I get this, some pots you shake out and get just this, and I'm gonna start culling because the more crabs, if it fills up, it's slower. The slower process, harder yep. it gets. Yeah. Okay. They start grabbing onto each other. All right. Well, I'm yep. gonna let you grade the. I don't, right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> all right. All right. It takes Joe about five hours to empty all the pots, rebate, and set them back out. Then it's on to Seaview's retail market. At the market, Joe, Sam, and Nathan sell their own catch, fish, and shellfish from other local fishermen to customers looking for the freshest seafood possible. They also pack and ship orders of fresh seafood all over the state. It's all about connecting with customers no matter where they are. Nathan, explain to me how all the components of your retail, your roadside stand, and your mail order business work together. Well, you know, it's been exciting. Uh, fishing and bringing stuff in here and then also going on the road and seeing how big of a demand there is for this local seafood. And so 
we've come with moving seafood forward as our main mantra or mission right. and so that's kind of our goal in the mornings we wake up all right we're moving seafood forward whether it's the roadside stand or shipping seafood um, bringing seafood into the market right. teaching people about different things new local fish things people have never heard about before possibly so you're getting to know your customers and you're teaching them how important it is to mm -hmm. look for local and to buy local yeah exactly we, we love doing our weekly email where we we kind of lay out new things or new items that we've gotten in the market and especially if it's something different that somebody's never heard of before right. and uh, little recipes and pictures and stuff like that that's one of my favorite things to do right. is teach somebody something they've never had before or something new about seafood. It's getting that relationship with your customer making mm -hmm. it personal. Exactly. exactly. You have a lot of repeat business don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah I'm we, do. Sure you do. we do. I'm sure you and do. We love to see it and that's what it's all about is just forming a good relationship with your with your customer making them trust you right. you know telling them to let us know how it turned out if anything you know just yeah good a good relationship. A good relationship. Mm -hmm. That's important. Nothing tastes better than fresh local seafood. But when it comes to crab, there's one thing you need to know. It tastes really good, but you've really got to work for your dinner. So I got Sam to give me a lesson in the right way to pick a crab. Lisa, I brought you back out here to show you how to pick a North Carolina blue crab. This okay. is an age old kind of a trick here. What you want to do is put your thumb right here. Okay. Take your other hand and just pull this top shell right off. There we go. Woo. Nice. Comes right off. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty all right. <laughs> Next thing you want to do is take these gills. Okay. Just go in and we're going to discard them. We don't need to do anything with them. Pull the gills off. Thanks. All right. The next thing we want to do here is take the face bit okay. off. Just right. snap that off and put it to the side. Put that to the you don't side. Need that. And then this next oh, lo better. lovely step here uh -huh. is we want to scoop this stuff out right here. Don't worry. You can always wash our hands after. Okay. That's the best part of this. Mm. <laughs> All right, after that, that's pretty good and clean. Let's scoop this last little bit out of there. Okay, you got a meaty oh, crab I wasn't there. Going you, got, deep you got a meaty crab. That's good. All right, next thing you want to do is, is break this right in half. All right, now thing. you flipped it over, so yeah. I'm going to flip. There you go, nice. Oh, Woo. nice. Okay, now we have two halves of the crab here. Okay. And we're going to start picking apart. What we really want to look for is this back, big, chunky piece here. Oh, oh that this, white yep, right there. That white. You take, there's a little bit of shell here we can pull right off. All right. Now we, we take this and just kind of peel it right off. There, there we go. Oh, that? Nice, perfect, perfect. And you pull a little bit of piece of shell off before you eat it, so you can have a nice, just a clean chunk of. This is what they call the lump part of the crab. That's the good it's, stuff. It's the good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna give it a try. Is All that right, okay? <laughs> go for it. Good stuff. It's good. It's sweet I'm and it's salty. Enjoy. Sam, thanks for showing me how to do this. Anytime, anytime. I, I don't know that I'm going to do it on a regular basis, but at least I know how. That's right. You can appreciate those crab cakes you eat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's safe to say that I don't have much of a future as a professional crab picker. But that doesn't mean I can't enjoy cooking up some great crab recipes. And that's just what I'm going to do with Chef Sean Weller's Dick here at Portland Grill in Wilmington. All right, Chef Sean, what are we going to make with some delicious North Carolina crab meat? We are going to make one of our most popular dishes at the restaurant, a uh, mac and cheese, but we're going to make a glorified mac and cheese using North Carolina lump crab meat, mm -hmm. some English peas, sun-dried tomatoes, and um, a whole lot of cheese. We're Ooh. going to do four different types of cheeses. Okay. Uh, so what's gonna, our first step? We're going to begin uh, making a roux, which is a uh, butter and flour. So in this pot, we're going to start with a little butter. We're going to do about a quarter pound of butter. Okay. We're going to add that. Turn on our heat over low heat. Okay, and you said roux is flour and butter, so what's yep. the purpose? It's a nat natural thickening agent, and so we're going to use that as our base with some milk that we're going to add to it a little later to make mm -hmm. a bechamel and then uh, turn that into a Mornay sauce, okay. which should be the foundation for our mac and cheese. All right. So in this, we're going to add a little bit of uh, shallots, which are a small sweet onion. Mm -hmm. We're going to add that to that. Okay. So you're going to kind of saute that in the melted butter. Yep, we're going to let the butter melt. We're going to add these onions and just let those marry for about three to five minutes. Bring out all that natural little sweetness flavor from the shallots. So we're gonna watch this for a couple minutes. Just make sure we don't get our heat too high. And we're gonna add a little Italian parsley to this. We're about halfway through. Okay. The onions are starting to cook, and getting the flavor out. We're gonna just add a little Italian parsley. That's gonna give a little extra flavor as well. We're gonna use that melting butter as a catalyst for the flavor as well. 
So we're gonna stir that in. We're getting close, we got about a minute or two before we start to add the flour. Our butter's about ready now, so we're gonna uh, begin to add some, a little flour okay. to make the roux. Okay. And at this, we're just gonna add in little stages as it- Gradually whisk that in. Yep, as it incorporates, you're just gonna watch it, see the flour be taken by the butter. Right, then you add a little more. A little more. Keep gradually adding flour a little at a time while stirring constantly until your roux gets to the consistency of peanut butter, then let it cook for a minute or two. While the roux cooks, Sean flavors the milk, adding a little cayenne pepper, nutmeg, and bay leaves, then turns on the heat. So you're just bringing all of that up to temperature? Yes. As far as the room temperature? Uh, or you're heating it, you're, you're boiling it. it. To about 105 degrees, 110 degrees, I mean, okay. being technical, but it'll start to bubble around the edges. One thing with milk is, um, why they call it scalding because it will scald the bottom of the pot very easily. So you really do want to pay some attention to this. Okay. It's starting it. We'll let that go. Pretty much constantly. But, yeah. <laughs> While the milk comes up to temperature, cook your pasta. Once the milk is warm enough, slowly incorporate it into the roux. We're going to begin um, adding a little bit at a time, or tempering, whatever you want to call it, okay. to our roux. In, these, in the beginning stages, you just want to add a little at a time. You can see it being incorporated. Okay, and as it's absorbed, you add a little bit more? Yes. Okay. Keep adding milk until you get the consistency you want. In this case, you want to keep the sauce on the thin side since we're adding four kinds of cheese, which will thicken it even more. What four cheeses are we working with today? We're gonna to be using a little sharp cheddar cheese, mm -hmm. a little Asiago, mm -hmm. a little Parmesan, mm -hmm. and a little Gruyere cheese, mm -hmm. Swiss aged cheese. Have to have in yeah. every mac and cheese. What do we add first? Um, we're gonna add a little Parmesan because Parmesan's one of the drier cheeses. Okay. So we're gonna see, we're just gonna add a couple tablespoons. We're gonna just add that in. Well, pretty much we're gonna do add all the cheeses at one, one time. One time, okay. So you can hand me a little bit I of each. Will. Whisk in all the cheese until it's melted. Then if your sauce is too thick, you can add a little of your leftover milk to get it just the way you want it. Then season with salt and pepper. And this is ready. All right. And then our next stage is we're gonna add our ingredients for the mac and cheese. A little let's pasta. It, let's put it together. Okay. What are we adding to it? Well, now we're gonna put the most important ingredients. We're gonna add the crab meat. Okay. We're gonna add a little pasta. All right. So we're gonna throw in our pasta. Hand me that crab meat, please. There you go. Mm, little, looks one good. One crab meat. Okay. Then we're gonna add English peas. English peas. Hand me those sun-dried tomatoes, please. Sun-dried tomatoes. Yum, yum, yum. Uh -huh, I like the color. Thank you. And then we're going to add a little basil, a little extra flavor. No one's going to be offended if we add that. No. And we're going to just stir all this together. Voila, it's that easy. Next, just ladle it into a casserole dish and top with the rest of your cheese. Pop it in the oven for about 20 minutes and get ready to have a happy tummy. Looks great. I cannot wait to dig in. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, look, look at, that at cheese. all that That's cheese. That's what you want, the cheese. Mm. What do you think? Mm. Crammy, a little English peas. Don't... That is full of flavor. I mean, all the cheese and the, the sun-dried tomato, mm. and I'm biting the crab. Thank you. Great. Oh. That's what we were going for. I'm loving this. Mm. All right, I've got my lunch. That and for the rest of the week, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I absolutely love risotto. It's one of my favorites. So what's your version here at the restaurant? We're going to do a little, using North Carolina crab meat, mm -hmm. a little uh, twist on the uh, Italian classic. Okay. And um, we're going to begin uh, with a little butter and oil in the pan. Okay. And we're just going to add this to a heavy bottom, any sort of sauce pan. I use a little butter and oil. So we're just going to add about a tablespoon of each. Okay. And in our version, you can use any type of onions, but I like leeks for this dish. So we're going to use a little leeks. We're going to add that right in. And with that, we're going to use a little pancetta, mm. which is a, a cured pork belly. Yeah. You get a lot of flavor, and we'll get a little salt that we love. And we're going to add that in there. And we're going to begin to cook those. Okay, so you're just sauteing those together. Yes. We're going to render the, the pancetta, get that nice fat, which is flavor. Mm. And that's going to marry in with our leeks. And we're going to use the oil 
in the pancetta fat as our catalyst for flavor. And this is going to take a couple minutes here. And so we're just going to stir that every couple 10, 20 seconds. Okay. So it takes how long for that to? I'd say about three minutes, okay. three to five minutes. All right, so what are we adding in? We're just going to add a little Italian parsley. It's one of my favorite herbs to use pretty much for a base for a lot of my cooking. Yeah. I know, I love parsley too. Stir that around for a few seconds, then it's time for the next step. And now we're going to add our arborio rice. Okay. Which is an Italian short grain rice. We're just going to add a little in time. Stir that in. And one of the important steps in risotto, in the method of it, is that make sure we want to heat our rice, but not necessarily brown it, because what we want to begin to do is draw out that starch that's in the rice. Okay. That's part of the trick with this whole dish is it's more of a mythology than anything is we're using hot liquid, liquid which could be flavored stock or water whatever your preference is uh -huh. and then we're gonna eventually add that in portions into this arborio rice mix and when we do that when that hot stock hits that rice it's gonna release the starch in there and it's also part of it is the method of they continually stir which is gonna draw out that and it gives it that rich creamy texture that you get you know, almost that, you know, you see the starch pulling out it where it gets thick. Okay. I know that creamy texture is my favorite part. <laughs> well, that's the key to the dish. <laughs> and now? So we're ready to add the liquid? We're ready to add our hot liquid. And we're just going to add this in portions. You can see it gets very hot. Also very important is not to add too much liquid at one time because you don't want to boil the rice. You, um, you're looking to just draw out that starch once again. Okay. And doing that, we're continuously stirring this. And this becomes a, a long process sometimes. Okay, so but you want to make gradual. sure you get, you just yeah. take your time. Yep, this is one of those, you want to make sure you have a little time and maybe a glass of wine by. That's right, and relax. Absolutely, just like the Italians. Okay. And it is kind of relaxing. Just stirring, adding liquid, stirring some more. Gives you time to think and relax a little for that half hour or so until it's just right. And you can see as that liquid gets absorbed into the rice, it gets a little thick. And that's what it is your starch, your natural starch out of the rice. And that's what you're looking for. Now we're ready to add a little more liquid. And back to stirring. And preferably like a good pasta, you want to make sure that this dish can be done al dente. It doesn't have to be overcooked. All right, we're finally done. It's been about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now we're uh, ready to add in our final ingredients. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's that? Well, we're going to add a little North Carolina crab meat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're going to finish it with a little Asiago mascarpone, which is an Italian style cream cheese. It's like a double, triple fat where you get a lot of flavor once again. Hence, anything with fat is your flavor. Right. But we're just going to add a little of that, and then we're going to stir in a little fresh basil at the end. Okay. So we're going to take our crab meat, and we're going to just add it right to the risotto. We're going to stir it. Gently, not too vigorously, because we want to try to keep what lumps we have. We're just going to incorporate it into the dish, the risotto itself here. If you can hand me a little of that Asiago, please. Mm -hmm. And Asiago is going to just sort of firm it up a little bit, but get a little of that flavor. And then we're going to add a little marsh capone right at the end. Spoonful? Yep, right there. That looks great. Don't want to add too much of the marsh capone. And then we're going to finish just a little basil, a pinch of basil. And of course, you want to adjust your seasoning to how you like it. So you want to uh, check your salt Taste and pepper. It, salt and pepper. Yep. Okay. All right. And that's it. It's done. That's it. Okay. Looks good. Not that hard. And you can see how no. rich and creamy it is. It's that's the texture and consistency, consistency you're looking for. Voila. Voila. You can whip up great recipes like Chef Sean's risotto or mac and cheese anytime you want if you keep a supply of crab meat on hand in your freezer. It's really simple. You just pack the crab meat into an airtight container. It will keep in your freezer for up to four months. I am constantly amazed at the variety of food produced in North Carolina. Seems like there's always something good growing here, both on land and in the water. I'm Lisa Prince, and I'll see you next time right here in Flavor NC.
To see today's recipes or for more information on local food and farmers markets in your area, visit FlavorNC.com. Flavor NC was made possible by Got to be NC Agriculture, the official state identity program for products grown and processed by farmers and value-added food companies in North Carolina. When you want the best, it's got to be NC. The Currituck County Department of Travel and Tourism. The Currituck County Outer Banks. More value, more excitement, more than you imagined. Additional support was provided by the following. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.